Do you want to learn how to put a rain barrel onto your existing rain gutter system in under 10 minutes? Keep watching this video and I'm going to show you how. It's pretty easy, pretty simple. I think you'll like it. Welcome back to Tabula Rasa Farm. My name is Chad. Today we're going to talk about rain catchment. What I have here sitting next to me is a 90 gallon uh, prefabricated rain barrel with a planter box on the top of it that I purchased from, from Lowe's home improvement store. I actually have two of them. I have another one on the, on the other corner of the house. Um, rain is one of those things that we can use to water different plants and things here around the house. You could use rain catchment as a water source for your home if you like. There's a lot of filtration and things that need to um, that need to happen for that to work correctly. Um, we're not doing that so I'm not getting into that part of it. This is strictly we're just going to catch water from the rain gutters, store it in these barrels and then use it to water our flowers and things that are going to be around the house. The, uh, the yard is still quite a mess. We're still getting the septic worked on right now. Um, so these are only gonna, these are only temporary for the moment. The reason why I'm putting them up right now instead of waiting is starting tomorrow we're supposed to get about five days worth of rain and this is more of a I'm not going to be storing this particular water that we're catching off of the roof for the next five days. Um, I'm doing it strictly for uh, mitigation of water just sitting over here. This is a really wet spot of our house because of uh, th how these rain gutters, um, the downspouts are. The downspouts come down, they feed into a corrugated pipe and run underground somewhere, somehow. And I'm pretty sure, I don't know where they come out at. I haven't seen anything. So they're just, I think they just end underground. So as soon as they fill up with water, they start overflowing. Um, if you're not familiar with rain catchment and how much rain you can catch off of a roof, um, here's a simple calculation for you. It's approximately, now these aren't, th th these aren't scientific numbers. These are numbers that I've looked up online and there's been, there's, there's quite a, not quite a difference, but there is a little bit of difference as far as how much water per square footage that you can catch off of your house. But what, what I go for is on a thousand square feet, which is approximately what our roof size is here is a thousand square feet um one inch of rain can give you just over 600 gallons of water so by doing that math i have two 90 gallon barrels it's about 180 gallons of water give or take a little bit i don't know if they're going to totally take 90 gallons or not because um, i'm going to put overflows on them and things like that but just a rough estimate 180 gallons um it only takes just over a quarter inch of rain to land on our roof to fill both of these barrels. So there is gonna be an overflow. The overflow is gonna run down to the creek so it doesn't just funnel out onto the yard. Um, we, have, we're, we live in a fairly wet climate here. So, you know, water management on the property is definitely a big issue that we're gonna constantly deal with here. So anyway, this is the 90 gallon rain barrel. It has two spigots, like I said. Um, and they are just regular house spigots. Um, they thread into the barrel. There's already threads put into the barrel. So it's, it's really, this is about as simple as it gets as far as putting a rain barrel system on. So these are going to get some Teflon tape. We're going to put them in. And then right here is a, a hole is already cut and there's a screen over it. Um, to keep bugs and, and debris and stuff out. But um, we're going to remove that screen and we're just going to feed this pipe directly into the barrel. Like I said, this is temporary just to get us through the next week. We will be keeping them. They will be in the same general location as you see them right now. But the setup that we're doing today is going to be just temporary. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut the downspout and we're going to hook this flexible pipe on it, onto it. And then we're just going to feed it into the top of this barrel and that's it. We're going to put these on. I'm going to hook a garden hose up to the bottom of each of them. And I'm going to run the garden hose down to the creek and I'm going to leave the valves open on them. So as the water's flowing into the barrel, it's acting as a catch basin 
Once the water comes down this pipe, it's gonna flow into here and it's gonna just flow into here. Like I said, this is gonna be a catch basin and we're gonna have garden hoses hooked up running down to the creek just to keep the runoff from pooling up here. Um, we still have a few holes laying around here. This is the one for the, um, for the old septic line that comes into the tank that we're still connected to at the moment. But they're at, right, we haven't had rain in about a week and there's still a little bit of standing water in there. Um, so like I said, water management, we have a, a, a high clay content soil here. So water doesn't just seep off like it normally does or just absorb into the ground. So um, we're gonna go ahead and, uh, and do this. I'm gonna try and film it in real time. I might have to fast forward some, but I'm gonna try and film it in real time so you can see about how easy it is to, to install one of these. So, but first we gotta talk about the tools we're gonna need. Um, you're obviously gonna need a barrel, spigots, everything that for the barrel comes with the barrel if you buy it this way. If you build your own, you're gonna have to go and look at some other YouTube videos on how to make your own manifold type systems and things to, um, to, uh, to get the water out of the barrel and things like that. There's a lot of really cool videos out there on how to do this. I kind of took the more simple route for me. Um, we might do something different down the line, but this is what we're gonna do for now. Um, so the tools you're gonna need is you're gonna need the barrel, all the hardware for the barrel, um, Teflon tape, it came with the barrel. So there was some in here. If you have your own, that would probably work just fine. Um, I've got some gutter screws here. These are just self tapping, um, white coated metal screws. Um, I had these from our old house, I had them left over. And so I figured this is a perfect time to use them. Um, you're going to need a saw of some sort to cut the downspout off when you're connecting this. And you're also going to need a screw device of some sort. Um, this is an impact driver. You don't have to have one of these. You don't even have to have a regular drill. You can do this with just a nut driver on the end of a screwdriver handle. Um, if you are using one of these power tools though, I suggest you are very careful with it, especially this one. This one's fairly high powered. If you hit the button too much, it'll strip out, completely strip out the hole that you're drilling into the, um, or that you're running the screw into, the self-tapping screw into the downspout. Um, so just be really careful. But uh, yeah, that's all the tools. If I figure out, if I figure there's anything else we're gonna need. Oh, and I've got a screwdriver also because the, the mesh screen that's on here that we're gonna take off is just held down by four Phillips head screws. So I just got this screwdriver. It was laying around out here. I just grabbed it. Um, if there's any other tools that I need when I come across them, definitely tell you about that. But from my assessment, I believe this is all I'm gonna need, but Anyway, we're gonna to get to it. Hope you enjoy. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and take the screen off of this rain barrel. And like I said, I'm filming this in real time so you can see about how long it, uh, it takes to do a project like this at your house. Four screws are out here's the little screen. We're just gonna set it right in here for, for the moment. Got a nice little hole there to deal with. Now the second thing we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to kind of route this around and figure out the configuration. And like I said, this is temporary, so I'm actually gonna cut mine fairly short down here so I've got a little bit of room to play with if I wanna, if I wanna elevate the barrel, if I wanna move it to a different location, I'm trying to be a little bit flexible without having to buy a whole brand new down, downspout piece because I'm trying to do what I got, you know, with what I got here, so. Um, just kind of take this, take this flexi pipe here and it appears we're going to cut it right about there. So grab our little saw here.
right, so now that we got the downspout cut here, there's an old bracket down here on the bottom of it. We're gonna go ahead and take these screws out and remove this piece off of here. Save that piece. We might use that for something later. I don't know. Probably not, but all right. So hopefully this will work. Hopefully it'll fit on here like I imagined it. Oh, it does quite well too. All right. So there we go, there's the general. Now, like I said, this is temporary. What I'm gonna be doing is, um, I'm probably gonna cut this a little bit shorter or a little bit higher to kind of give it a little more of a better angle to come down into the, uh, into the barrel. But that's the general location. We're gonna go ahead and screw this in real quick. You don't want to screw these in real hard or real far. You just want them in well enough to hold it in place. That's all it's for. It's not supporting any weight or anything like that. It's just simply to hold everything in place. So well, we got the, got the downspout hooked up. Now we're going to go ahead and do the... Um, do the valve spigots here. So on this particular barrel, like I said, it came with the spigots. It's just a standard garden hose connection here. And this is the piece that threads into the barrel. And you'll see on here, it's kind of self-explanatory, but the part that has more threads on it is the one that's gonna go in the barrel, okay? The big key to this, the reason why, or the main thing you wanna take care of here is, um, you wanna put some Teflon tape on here just to keep it from leaking. If you do any type of plumbing or have hooked up any type of changed out a faucet or anything like that, you know how, how, um, how well this works or how, I'm trying to think of, if you don't have this, it's probably gonna leak more than likely. So the best rule of thumb here is you wanna make sure you put it in the same direction as you're threading it in. Um, so I just hold it right like here with my right hand, or I hold it in my left hand, I got the tape in my right hand and you just want to put it on here and you're just gonna wrap it in a, in a, clockwise, in a clockwise direction. Um, obviously, if you have something that is reverse threaded, then, uh, then you won't, you'll, probably, you'll go the opposite direction. So just throw a couple rounds on there. Doesn't have to be a whole lot, but you want a couple of, a couple layers, just pops off right on the end there. And then uh, we'll just go down here in the hole. Right down here in the bottom is where the hole is and just thread it in. Now, once you get close to getting all the threads run down and you wanna change the angle of your spigot, this is the time to do it. If you don't want it, you don't have to necessarily tighten it all the way down because in the spigot, the spigot might be pointing down that, that direction and I don't want it to go that way. I want it to kind of come out. So um, I got maybe a, maybe one, one thread, maybe not even that much sticking out. So that should be enough to, um, to keep it sealed. And again, like I said, this is temporary. This is kind of a test. I'll come out after it rains and see if it's leaking or not. Um, but well, we're gonna do the same thing with the second spigot and you can't see this from the angle, but there's one on this side. I'll show you when we're done. Um, there's one on this side that, uh, like I said earlier, is for a, like a watering can or a five gallon bucket 
or whatever. Some people I've seen online have another potted plant or something right there. Or they got a short, or they got it next to a large flower bed and they got a short soaker hose that comes off of here so they can just come when they want to do a good soak on the, uh, on the flower bed, they just um, come out and turn it on. So same thing with that one. This one we're gonna go ahead and make sure it's pointed more in the downward direction, straight out, so we can get a bucket or a watering can or something underneath it. And just like that, we got a rain barrel installed. All I gotta do now is get my garden hoses hooked up, run down to the creek. I'm gonna do the one on the other side. It's gonna be exactly the same as this one, so I'm probably not gonna film it. Um, that one's gonna take a little more leveling because it's, this one's a little, this is on a little bit more flatter dirt. And when we come back to reset these, we're gonna put them on bricks. They're gonna be level. Um, that's pretty a pretty important thing when it comes to rain barrels that they are on a level surface because if they're not, and you do have them filled up all the way, if they are tilted at all, the uh, center of gravity is higher when it's full or it's it's not towards the bottom when it's when it's when it's only got a little bit of water in it the weight's all in the bottom but if it's completely distributed throughout the entire barrel and it's on a it's on a slope there's a possibility it could fall over um it could break the barrel it could just make a big mess something i don't want to deal with so over there i'm gonna have to dig out a little bit because it the the yard is sloped a lot more away from the house so the one over there we're gonna set it up on blocks but um that's it that's installing a rain barrel you know um yeah that's it all right y'all this is a uh, about an hour or two later after we installed this rain barrel i was inside starting to edit this video and realized i didn't do a quick kind of close-up walk around to show you what the barrel looks like so here's what the top looks like this is a planter box that's up here and then there's a small overflow drain hole right there that comes from the planter box so if it gets too much water it will just go ahead and, and spill out the front um, and then there's the bottom spigot with the garden hose hooked up and then here's the one on the side I was telling you about you just put like a five gallon bucket or something underneath there and get whatever water out of it that you need so yep that's the uh, rain barrel project I got the one on the other side of the house put on we got the hoses hooked up to run down to the creek and i think we're ready for the rain so uh appreciate y'all watching and have a great day